establishing a business in drone automation. In this webinar, Peter will give us a sneak peek of his brand child, the iDeployer, and tell us what's new at the iDeployer headquarters after the release of the flagship product. I would also like to take another moment to welcome my colleague and director of business development at Flightbase, Achal. Achal today would share some anecdotes and insights that he has learned over the numerous conversations with drone service providers from across the globe and walk us through the partner exclusive program that we are launching today. So welcome Achal and welcome Peter. Thank you, Bashari. Thank you, Bashari. To begin, uh, I, I'll move on to Achal. Could you elaborate on the current challenges that the drone service providers usually face with the standard day-to-day -day drone operations? Right. Sure. Thank you, Vaishali. Hi, everyone. This is Achal. Nice to see you all. So let me set the context. And to set the context, I'm going to talk about the problems that we have heard from working with various DSPs and what are the problems that they are facing today. So as you go out in the field and fly these drones, there are a lot of challenges that you're facing. So starting from traveling to these distant locations where you do long hours of travel through rough terrain, inaccessible sites, uh, go and collect data over there. Uh, then you'd have to come back, manually upload the data onto the cloud through your USB stick when you're back into your office or a hotel where you're doing this operation. And then you suddenly realize that, okay, something is wrong, you have to again go and fly that mission, right? So this is a never ending process. And I'm sure a lot of drone solution providers who are listening to me right now can empathize or relate to that. So one is distance location. Of course, we can't uh, talk more about the operating conditions, right? You work in situations where there are extreme weather conditions from uh, deserts to having uh, ice cold weather, to even going to uh, nuclear power plants or toxic environments where there are stringent check-in procedures and uh, you, you would have to go there every day and follow all of that. Similarly, when even if you are providing training to the pilots who are there on the job site, this could be your own pilots or these are the pilots who are on the job site, which may be employees of this company, uh, there is uh, always an issue of retraining because people obviously move around, they leave the job, and there is an overall decrease in onboarding efficiency owing to the constant training of the security guards or officials or the pilots that have been hired to replace. Uh, that uh, the, to completely uh, do the operations on those sites. So the fourth part is there are operations where you need 24 cross seven operations, right? Your customers will be looking for a security drone. And now it could be very difficult to have a pilot on the ground or train somebody on the site who could fly a drone 24 cross seven for the site awareness. And that is the requirement for that customer site. So how do you solve these problems? Uh, how can you overcome all of this? So to, to get this, to get to the place where you can start doing uh, operations and solve these problems is you'd have to upgrade to the autonomy. And this is what the topic of the webinar here is, where how you can upgrade to the autonomy and how Flight Now and iDeployer can help you get there. So to upgrade to autonomy, of course, we have been talking about drone in the box systems where uh, on May 21st, we launched iDeployer, which is a cost-effective, affordable, in, uh, compact docking station, which works with DJI Mavic 2. So this allowed a lot of uh, companies, drone solution providers to start adopting this technology where they already had their reliable DJI Mavic 2. They got, uh, they, uh, they're getting the docking station where they are looking to deploy this for various security use cases, construction, agriculture, et cetera. And they are using FlightNow software. So we spoke about these three components in our past events where uh, how you can get started with the technical front. So today, what we'll do is we'll learn about what are the updates to this product and what, what are the things that we have been doing uh, since May 21. Uh, plus, we're going to talk about the uh, things that we have in for you for the partner program launch. Thank so you, I'll again, Yeah, I'll uh, give it back to the Vaishali to take it forward. Thank you. Thanks again. 
To talk about the new and improved iDeployer MP 2.1, let, let me move on to Peter. So welcome again, Peter. Could you tell us what is brewing in the IDI headquarters? Hi, Vitar. Yes, thank you very much for the um, integration, uh, introduction and um, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, so, yes, we, um, as Basali said, we, we, we are operators in the UK airspace in terms of um, drone operations, um, completing various missions across construction, um, telecoms, um, and built up a really large client base. And it, it sort of got to that stage of COVID-19 um, where work slowed down um, and we couldn't do the work that we, we did um, as remote pilots. Um, and that got us thinking um, and, and got us um, sort of talking to our client base um, about how we can automate the process um, and how we can simplify the process in these difficult times. Um, so we began searching the market for um, autonomous systems. Um, so how, how we can try and complete the, the workload that they still required from the drone operators, but without that remote pilot in place. Um, and we just could not find a solution that, that suited the client in terms of it being simple um, and in terms of it being um, cheaper um, and a good return on investment for our clients. Um, and with our with our background in in, in UAVs, we, we know our way around the, the aircrafts. Um, we understood how they operated um, and we had a bit of an engineering background um, within our team. So we set about sort of researching, developing um, and prototyping um, various methods of um, joining the box systems. Um, and that journey was, you know, a, quite a rapid one over 18 months. So sort of COVID-19 allowed us to slow down, if you like, and actually innovate in, in, in this kind of product, um, in this autonomy, because we know that's where the, the industry is directing. Um, so that, that's um, a sort of a bit about how we've got to uh, where we are today in the production of um, the iDeployer system. Thanks, Peter, for the introduction. Uh, so there, there are many people in the audience today who might have missed the official launch. So could you quickly walk us through the product? Yeah, sure. So we, um, we've done very sort of um, types of, of system and um, talking to our, our clients and understanding exactly what they needed. Um, and also on the back of that, talking to the, the regulators to understand what safety mitigations we needed to put in place on our systems um, to allow them to be um, operated in um, UK and EU airspace. Um, so we've, we've got some of the mitigations in place and you can see on here some of the um, LED alerts. Um, so we have the um, lighting system that mimics the, um, the UAV. Um, so when it's um, got a fault, uh, they'll be red. When it's ready to take off, they'll be flashing green. Um, so we've got a real good visual indication of what's happening with our system. Um, we've also um, insulated the box um, to, to ensure that um, there's no overheating risks. Um, and the reason we've sort of changed it to white um, is, is, is that obviously that UV reflection, um, which reduced our temperature of inside the box by nearly 10 degrees. So, um, you know, it's, a, it's a, a good modification we made on our sort of version one. Um, we've increased the sort of anti-theft system because that was some concerns from clients. Um, so we have the locking system on the front of the box. Um, and so that locks the, the, the drone into the case. Um, I mean, if someone wants to get in, um, you know, they, they will always get in these systems, but that we've made it as anti-theft as we possibly can. Um, and, and also our research sort of told us that our clients wanted minimum drone modifications. Um, and not only that, we wanted the systems to still have, to be, still be as safe as they possibly can be. Um, and we know that doing any sort of real damaging sort of modifications to the drone to enable it to do the automation just isn't a good thing. Um, so we've got real minimum modifications to it. So any, any um, attachments you see are, are on our drone are just that, they are attachments similar to the um, prop guards. Um, so we have two connections on the, on the drone's feet um, and that enables us to um, trigger the charge uh, into the battery. Um, the contact plates that you sort of see on this um, drawer 
um, are where we make the contact with, with them um, drone feet. Um, and that's how we trigger the charge for the drone. Um, and we only send um, the system um, the, the voltage and the amperage that it's expecting. Um, so we don't overcurrent the, the battery. Um, we use the, uh, the DGI um, charger um, inside of our box. So it is only getting what it's expecting. Um, so it's a very safe charging method. Um, so that's sort of a whistle stop tour of, um, of the image you see on the picture. Um, we are going to show you some sort of live pictures of the, um, of the drone of the box itself. Thanks, Peter. <clears throat> we, we can already see that there has been so many uh, changes or modifications in the box. And you did mention about uh, the change in the color uh, to, uh, for, for, for various reasons. Moving on to the next slide, we can see that how, how the box has changed from the, the launch that we, we, we had seen on May 21st to what it is today. So uh, maybe we can uh, focus on Robert. Robert is on field and I can already see uh, him uh, sh uh, showing the box out there. Uh, hi, Robert, can you hear us? I can, yes. Please can I talk us through the box? Yeah, I'll talk. Um, so I'll talk you through through the system. Obviously, the, the, the feed isn't that great, but um, we'll do the best. Um, yeah, so um, similar to what you, you see on the image. So um, this is our production model. So um, as you see at the front of the box here, we have um, we have these roller bars. Um, so Robert just goes a bit closer down to these roller bars. Um, so what we found was we're, we're using um, flight bases position landing, um, which is extremely accurate. So we get a really good um, central landing of the drone. Um, but should there be a um, um, gust of wind or it goes slightly off that landing tag by up to six centimeters, um, which is during our testing, that's, that's the maximum we've seen away from the center. Um, as the draw closes, um, the prop guards are nudged onto these roller bars and it just pushes it back into the center. Um, so it's just a really simple method of positioning the drone. Um, and the reason we chose to do this external simple method is because we wanted to remove any robotics um, because robotics are um, number one, uh, very expensive. Um, and, and we wanted to keep the drone in a box system as, um, as, as, as affordable for you, for you drone service providers as possible. Um, so there is no complex um, robotics in the system. Do you want to move around, Rob? I think we've lost Robert's raw live feed. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll continue talking about the box until he gets a live feed. Um, so also on the, on the bottom of the box, uh, we have a, a draw positioner. Um, so again, um, we wanted to remove um, any actuate, actuators because um, they're moving parts um, from our system. Um, so we use um, a couple of bars on the bottom of the um, bottom of the door, um, which pulls the door into position, into its locking position. Um, so again, a very simple method um, and just keeps things uh, nice and affordable for the end user. I, I can see Robert. Uh, oh, I think we've got his live feedback, have we? Yeah. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, show you the top of the box and the rear of the box, really. So um, we have these um, antennas. So um, we do a small modification to the RC so we can extend the um, antennas out of the box. Um, and that just ensures that we always have a, um, a very good signal for the RC. Um, and the second bar you see going across the back of the box is for LTE. Um, so that's our 4G network. Um, however, you can access the, the box uh, systems via Ethernet. Um, but we have various different options of, of connectivity. So do you want to show us inside the uh, rear panel, Rob? Um, so this is the access panel to the, to the, to the rear of the box. Um, I don't think the, the, the image is doing it justice, um, but um, in, inside the system, we have, um, we have various sort of tech around um, how the box is operating. Um, and then we have the uh, single board computers that are controlling the UAV. Um, so we have an Odroid, Odroid system, which effectively becomes the um, mobile device, um, which we, what we use with flight-based software to control the missions of the drone. 
Um, and then we have various different controllers that then um, operate the box um, and give us feedback on the on the state uh, of the system. So that's a sort of whistle stop tour of the box. Uh, Vasali, over to you. Thank you, Peter. That that really looks amazing. So uh, moving on to Achal, Achal, why don't you tell us, uh, tell, tell the audience about the software that controls the box and that is running behind it all. Sure. Uh, is my screen back? Yes. It is. Right. So uh, great updates to the product. And similarly, we've been doing upgrades to the flight now. So you can have a fully automated operations. Uh, planned through the dashboard. So at the left, you see various modules or widgets which are available uh, available in the dashboard from fleet management to mission planning to mission scheduling, analyzing your logs. Of course, the precision landing, which allows the drone to precisely land on the docking station every time, as well as you have the guest view where if you want to quickly share this video uh, from the drone coming to your screen with uh, your client or the guest, you can just hit the share button and uh, generate a private link to show that video. So this is really handy in terms of emergency operations, security operations, etc. And of course, uh, you can integrate a smart wall to it where you're able to get all the video feeds on one screen. So you can efficiently conduct patrols, uh, remote monitoring, security, site progress monitoring using flight now. You can land the drone precisely, enabling your drone to autonomously maneuver and land itself. We have built various fail uh into the system and the recovery algorithms, which ensures that the drone would come and land on the box every single time. And of course, the complete control and telemetry of the box and the automated routine are built in, in flight now auto. And of course, the, the applications are endless. So today you could be deploying that on a construction site, on a mining site, uh, or back of your pickup truck for the emergency response operations. The applications are endless. So you can easily get these boxes uh, and these are so compact and use your very own DJI Mavic 2 where you can start deploying them for various use cases. And FlightNow will provide you all the software modules to enable your operations uh, for any use case. Now we move on uh, to, we have seen the technology, but how do we start selling these units and how, how do we work closely together? And there are of course barriers to DSPs who are looking to adopt this technology. So of course there is an upfront investment on the hardware and system for conducting all the demos where you need this solution to start to show it to your customers, make sure that they are liking it, they want it, so you can go and deploy these units. You need the technical support for all this success of the demos because a customer might have certain success criteria that you need to make to win that deal or show them the exact value of the solution. You would also need close collaboration with OEMs like us uh, and other manufacturers who are building sensors, security sensors, or uh, software integrations where you need these additional modules to be integrated as the customer would require. So somebody could be looking for a video management system or a VMS integration, or somebody could be looking at a IoT sensor integration. Uh, some would want to use some other modules or ERP software to do analytics or uh, post-processing, create auto mosaics. So you need a close collaboration with these OEMs where uh, we can help you coll collaborate with all of that. And of course, you need support on marketing and sales for these offerings. So you need the right material. You have to go and pitch them to the customer, et cetera. Uh, then, of course, what is the go-to-market strategy? How are you going to pitch the solution and position yourself in the market? Uh, when you go to these enterprise customers, you have to prepare for the proposal. You need to make sure that the ROIs are great for them and what is going to work, what is not going to work. What does it look at the volume or the scale level where you're going to deploy 10, 20, 300 docking stations in the coming time? And of course, regulations and compliance. How would this system would be 
approved uh, and have all the compliance to be deployed in that particular geography. So these are some barriers with DSP, uh, DSPs are facing where they want to overcome these uh, to get started, uh, get started on selling these units to their end customer. So with this, we have designed a complete program, which we call a DIB partner program, uh, which helps drone solution providers to overcome these barriers. So the intent of this program is to provide all the support that eligible DSPs need to kickstart their business for helping end users adopt docking stations for automated drone operations. So the idea again here is that how we can closely work with you to help you with all the components, technical, non-technical business marketing to get you that stage. The way you got started with your DJI drone four years, five years from now, where you started doing these commercial operations and now you are into the drone business. Similarly, a shift is happening where you'd have to adopt this kind of technology uh, to build your next level or next offering. And that is where uh, I deploy and flight now are coming together to help you uh, build that. So we're gonna talk about the pro uh, partner program benefits. And first we're gonna talk about uh, what iDeployer or iDrone Images has to offer. So again, I would invite Peter to help us understand about the iDeployer partner program. Hi, thank you, HL. Um, yeah, so we're, you know, we're really excited to launch this, um, this partner program. We've sort of been working on this throughout the, um, throughout the year, really. We, and, and this is born out of a lot of our, our, our clients, our drone service providers. Um, and we have various in, in the EU uh, at the moment that are, are joining our partner program. Um, and we've built this program to, to help bring these, um, these docking stations and automation to market um, and to aid um, the regulators really understand how these systems are operating in, in, in airspace um, and gathering that evidence. So I think these kind of programs will really help um, shape the future of the regulations. Um, within our partnership program, we have sort of various benefits really. We have the exclusive docking station discounts that we, we offer on our systems um, that, that are only open to our drone service providers uh, partner program. Um, we have our bespoke online training, so um, we design the training for you um, and how you, your, what your use case is for the systems. Um, we do that online with your, with your team um, and we also do the online setup um, of the docking stations with you, um, when, you see, when you receive them. Um, we give you priority system support um, over, the, over the journey of your um, purchase with us. Um, so, you know, we don't want to just send these docking stations out there and, and, and leave you to it. Um, we're there throughout the whole whole journey. So any support you need or any updates that we need to push to your system, um, we can do that remotely um, and you'll have that support for us um, as a priority um, joint service provider. Um, again, we're, obviously we're, we're well aware that launching these systems need marketing um, and you need help with that. Um, so we have a bespoke marketing package for you to bring your products to market uh, and to help you demonstrate these products to end users. Um, so, so when you're ready to do your demonstration days, um, we will help you with that marketing. Um, and then once you're doing that demonstration, again, doing some online marketing to, to show that demonstration and to, to sort of really get the system out there. Um, and, and obviously throughout, throughout the year, we do similar to what we, we're doing now, where we're doing these, um, these webinars, um, but we are going to be doing something similar as um, iDeployer around uh, partner events. Um, and, you know, this, is just, this isn't just about uh, marketing, this is about sharing our experiences um, as drone service providers um, and, and us understanding the use cases that you're, you're finding or coming across. Um, and sharing that, that knowledge and information with other partners. Because um, again, I, I think going back to our mission of um, helping with the regulations of these systems, I think having that knowledge base amongst a um, drone service partner community is um, um, standing in good stead for the future. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Peter. 
similarly, Flight Now is here to help you with all the partner benefits from the software side. So we obviously offer the special discounts on the subscription. So you have margin on the software subscriptions. Uh, you get remote training of using each and every module. So again, we have designed a dashboard which enables one to many uh, workflows which could be required for your application. So it's very important for you to understand each and every component which is available in the application where you can apply them depending upon what application or what sub application you're uh, doing with, with the system. Uh, of course, uh, Training also includes priority support and documentation where this would enable you to get to the stage where you are able to troubleshoot a lot of things in terms of what is going wrong, the software in case you're facing some issues or the minor issues, as well as once you get started uh, with, uh, with the deployments, you would need support in terms of uh, handling the system, deploying the system, making sure they, they are deployed well uh, and connected to the system with, uh, with the complete connectivity, as well as uh, anything that would be required for the troubleshooting. Uh, the fourth is about join go to market where we had a podcast uh, last Friday where we invited one of our partners uh, from Belgium. Similarly, we are doing uh, more such kind of events as well as working closely with them so we can jointly work to on the uh, deals or with the customers to solve those problems for them. And for that, you of course get access to all the flight now sales and marketing collateral where you're able to uh, present that, send proposals and everything. So those are some benefits uh, where iDeploy and flight now are coming together to offer you as part of the partner program. Uh, so, of course, these uh, benefits are only available to selected uh, DSPs and we have an eligibility criteria for the program. So I would like to take you through uh, those points one by one so you can understand and see whether you are eligible for the program or not. So we, we are particularly looking to work with drone solution providers who have been already doing uh, drone services or drone providing drone solutions and have the potential to scale. So when I mean scale, you're working on the applications where uh, drone automation uh, is going to play a key role. So if you're doing things where you have a high frequency mission or remote uh, locations that need to be covered, or this is where you have a very difficult situation to send somebody as a human to fly the drone, you need those kind of use cases uh, to deploy these automated station as we spoke at the start of the webinar. Uh, you need to operate in markets that are ready for adapt adoption for autonomous drones. So we have been working in the EU region uh, with multiple partners where we are helping them with the compliance, their uh, SORA, their PDRA, et cetera, uh, where there would be adoption happening uh, uh, in, on scale in these markets. As well as there are uh, situations where you, uh, you need to deploy that at remote places where it's very difficult to get somebody to go there. And we're looking for such kind of use cases or partners operating in that market. Uh, we are focused majorly on aerial security, progress monitoring, and asset inspection. Uh, the reason being that uh, where we see immense ROI, where uh, you ag again need uh, frequent missions to do this, and there is a huge value of uh, deploying automated drone systems. Uh, and preferably, you already have a pool of customers who have received good ROI from adopting autonomous drones or semi-autonomous drones, and they see the value. So we're looking for partners who already have these pool of customers. And you have a good understanding of drone deployments, how would regulations work, working with customer and providing support. Of course, we'd be there to help you learn this technology, the hardware, the software, whatever is required from the regulation side, we are happy to help you provide those kind of modules uh, or add-ons uh, to get that compliance as well as any data that you need to build that safety case. And of course, you need to be ambitious and result oriented where you have plans for scaling as I said on the first point, and you're looking to create an edge for your business uh, in a particular domain with drone automation. Yeah, so with that, uh, I, I'll again move on to Peter. Peter, if you can highlight what we are offering to the selected partners uh, 
in in the IWR package. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so we've um, to get started, uh, we want to include um, sort of a full package, really. So you can take these systems and demonstrate them to your 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 end users. Um, you want to put up the points for me? Yeah. So the um, our, our systems come with the iDeployer um, docking station, um, and we can provide the um, the UAV with that docking station should you require it, because um, we we can do the small modifications for you. Um, some drone service providers prefer prefer to do the the modifications themselves, which are quite simple to do um, but we can do all of the modifications that are required for UAV and provide it with the docking station um, yep um, we, we um, have the sort of flight now um, auto subscription uh, for three months um, on that system so it gives you a really good chance um, to demonstrate the systems and understand the software and uh, get to sort of know and love that software um, as I said earlier, we, we, you get extended um, support from us, um, so you will always have um, us available um, if the, you have any issues with the system. Um, and likewise, um, Flightbase are, um, are very good at giving that support too. Um, we provide a one-year warranty with our, um, with our systems. Um, obviously, the, we do some modifications to the um, UAV. Um, in terms of the, the legs um, and um, a small modification to the battery switch um, and, uh, and the RC, uh, we have to do a modification on so we can remotely switch it on and off. Um, so we, we cover that uh, warranty of the drone um, because we do that modification. So in, term, in terms of price, so we, we market the systems um, at 7999. Um, and, you know, we are really keen um, not to sell volume. We are keen to sell these systems to drone service providers and partners um, so they can get out there and demonstrate it. So we've, um, we've reduced that, that price for, for you guys only. Um, and we're going to do that for, for 4999 for you. Um, so, yeah, significantly lower price. Um, and it's a similar price um, for, for, our, for, the, for the distribution price when you sell it to, to clients. Um, so there is significant return on investment from your side um, with these systems. Great, that's great, Peter. So as a partner, you'd get a, a straight 3,000 pounds discount on the retail price. And if you're eligible, you'd be able to get this uh, demo units at this price which would help you uh, conduct all these demos go to the events etc and of course we'd help you with all the benefits uh, that we just spoke uh, a while back so yep that that is included in the package and all of that is just for four triple nine so you can get started and the idea here is and we, we have significantly reduced the cost because we want you guys to get started and have these kind of demos being conducted and work with you to make sure uh, these systems are compliant in your geography, your areas where you're going to deploy that. So that's the reason of this price drop where we want to make it easy uh, for you to get the first unit and get started with your uh, deployments or your demos first. So of course, there is a, uh, there is a eligibility criteria that we spoke about. So to get started, you'd have to head to this page uh, where it be flightnow.com slash iDeployer on FlightNow website or Iron Images iDeployer partner program. You can also scan this code and there is a small form that you have to uh, fill in to register for the program. And then our teams would get back to you uh, to help you understand the rest of the process and how you can uh, be eligible for this program. So with this, I would just open it for Q&A. And yeah, let's take some questions from the audience. Thanks, Achal. Thanks for sharing uh, and, and detailing the program. So I we have a lot of questions for you, Peter, around the box. Uh, I, I just take it one by one. So what is the operating temperature and the box rating? Uh, is it IP66? So we've um, we've we've sent our, our systems for IP testing because we've made some quite um, significant changes to the external structure. So our previous box was um, rated at 55, um, and we've 
we've now increased um, increased the um, the IP of the system. Um, we've now sent that for testing, um, and we're hoping to achieve that um, 66. Um, but obviously, we need to wait for that result. But um, yes, it, it, it's weatherproof. Um, operating temperatures. Um, we, in terms of in terms of we our, our docking station, we operate at the same temperatures as the UAV. Um, so. Um, you know, down to five degrees and up to the the um, highest of 40 degrees because um, we have the ambient cooling systems in place um, as a add on feature. Um, you can purchase um, HVAC systems um, and attach them to the, the box um, that has that capability to do that. So if you are put in a more extreme climates, um, we can install that heating and cooling for you. Um, and then we can get that tested to that um, environment that you'll, you'll require the op to operate them in. Thanks, Peter. Uh, we also have questions around, is there an estimated life cycle or a maintain, like what, what is the maintenance program? Or does um, it in terms of maintenance, we've built the system very low maintenance. There is only one moving part. Um, so in terms of the life cycle of, um, of the, the battery, um, you know, because we're charging in the drone and the battery is a, a single use battery, um, we recommend that's that's charged um, 100 uses um, or when you start to see the um, voltage depletion um, and you'll be able to see that on the dashboard. Um, so we, you know, we recommend that that, that battery is swapped out. Um, it's a very simple process and we provide the maintenance instructions to do that. Um, we don't tie you into maintenance with us because it is very simple to maintain. Um, you know, the, the life cycle of the box is the life cycle of the UAV. Um, so, you know, any small parts or components that fail or uh, need replacement, um, we can send them out to you um, to um, do a simple swap out. Um, we've made the, the, all of the components in one accessible um, access panel at the rear um, to make that sort of maintenance process simple. All right. Uh, we also have a question around uh, the 4G. Is there is the box connected to 4G and or 5G? Yeah. So we have, we have there's multiple connections that we've um, integrated. So you can um, plug the Ethernet in to the rear of the box um, if you have access to the Ethernet, um, or you can um, access via the LTE. Um, so we have a um, an LTE box inside. Um, you can put a SIM card into that box and use your uh, 4G, 5G network in the future. Um, but yes, it's um, it's got multiple sort of access ability. Also, Peter, how how can users power the box at any at a remote site? Yeah, so um, uh, we we test our systems um, on remote locations. Um, so we don't have access to power where we test them. So we take a, a power bank with us. Um, which lasts us uh, for, for six hours operating the system. Um, and that's um, also operating various laptops and et cetera, et cetera. So, it, you know, we, we've, we've used the power bank and um, it, the, the, it's 140 volts or 230 volts in. Um, so standard sort of plug. So it's very um, easy in terms of the power setup. Um, and obviously you can attach solar panels to your power bank uh, to power the system too, if it is in a remote location. Um, so there's various options really to power it. That sounds great. Uh, also, Peter, could you just mention the compatible drones uh, with the iDeployer? Yeah, so um, obviously we our, our research um, at the very beginning of the build of these systems, um, we spoke to uh, most of our clients we already worked with and you know talked about what drone would most be, be most suitable um, and each time uh, some clients wanted the the biggest and the best drone they could buy but actually it didn't function uh, or do the job or was too much for that that use case um, so we we built integrated it with a Mavic 2 uh, series um, because of its versatility and the size um, and because of its size, we can mitigate a lot of the risk concerns that are within the regulations. Um, and in the future, hopefully, um, we can we can prove that the use cases with this drone um, are, are so good that, that we can get regulatory approval for the iDeployer system itself. Um, that's the, the vision for the future. Um, hence why we haven't gone for them big, heavy drones. But, you know, with our CAD designs that we have um, and with the right client in terms of 
um, you know, confirmation that they definitely want to order systems with a specific drone, then we can build a bespoke docking station for that, that, that client. Um, but there's very sort of stringent um, eligibility criteria for us to, to be able to do that um, development. Thanks, Peter. Now, uh, in continuation to that question, since, since you mentioned that the DJI uh, drones, the Mavic series drones come uh, in, as in are compatible with the box, does the price that the that we quoted um, here for uh, as a partner program benefit does it include the Mavic 2 Zoom or the Pro drone? No, so they need to um, need to buy the um, Mavic 2 se separately, um, but we will do the um, integration of that that system for you. Um, so we would source that drone, we would do the modifications, and we would send it ready ready to plug and play. You did mention about. Uh, that in the workflow moving ahead that you custom drones would be supported and uh, could you just let uh, our uh, users know the external dimensions of the box yeah so um, at the moment the box is um, 800 millimeters in length um, 650 millimeters wide and 350 millimeter high um, so very compact um, very lightweight so it's under 30 kilograms um, and it's it, it's mountable in mo multiple locations. So you probably see on some of the um, images we sent, we've got, um, you can um, install this on a gantry, uh, back of a vehicle, on a roof, ground level. Um, it's very compact. Um, and we designed it that way so we could um, in integrate it in multiple locations. Um, and it's not too big that it's an obvious integration for like a construction site or um, security of premises. Um, and again, we can we can wrap the box in any vinyl, um, so we can put your graphics on it, or we can camouflage it. Um, we can do any wrap the client needs. Um, we just just talk to us, and we can um, make that happen for you. All right. Oh, a lot of other questions around the box. Uh, so, what what is the weight of the box, and does it allow, or does it include a battery just in case of a power failure? No, it doesn't have um, it doesn't have backup battery systems um, um, purely because of the, the cost that that would add to the systems. We wanted to make it affordable. Um, however, if clients want to add that that backup system um, or request it through us. Um, you know, we're definitely open to integrating different systems like that. Um, if it requires development, then we'll, we'll discuss it with the clients as we go through. Um, I think there was a question on the back of the Mavic uh, that I just seen come up. Sorry. Uh, around, I can see a few other questions around, is the battery modified? Yes, um, so we don't modify the battery. So we did a, an extensive amount of research on the batteries um, and also talking to the, um, the regulators in the UK, the CAA, um, around um, some of the modifications on the drone. Um, and, you know, we were really adverse and so were the regulators on doing modifications to the battery cells um, because that is, um, it can be potentially dangerous. Um, so we do not do any modifications to the battery cell. Um, all we do is we, we put a single wire onto the switch so we can just send a pulse to the switch. Um, it doesn't send, um, we don't interact with the battery cells or the battery management system. Um, so we don't override the battery management system. So it always knows the state the battery's in. Um, and we don't flood it with um, amperage that is over the rating of um, DJI's batteries. Um, so yeah, that's that's a long answer, but we don't do um, cell modifications. Thanks again, Peter, for clarifying. I think we've got multiple such questions around uh, the battery modification, and if they have to do it, is is it easy for the partners to do it themselves? So thanks for clearing that out. Uh, Moving on to the software side, uh, Achal, uh, there is a question around if there is a loss of RC or, uh, or GPS connection loss, then what does what happens to the drone? Mm -hmm. So there are various uh, fail safes that are already built into the software where we have extended the basic DJI fail safes as well as we have introduced mm -hmm. fail safes which are very important or required for these kind of operations. So these are user configurable. If you uh, lose RC connection, the drone can uh, trigger return to home. If you lose 4G connection, you could set a trigger 
uh, or a timeout that if you don't regain that in say 30 seconds, do this, where you can return to home or continue a mission, depending upon where you're flying the drone and what is your use case. So you have configurable field saves which are available uh, and you can uh, deploy that or use them according to your use case. Thanks, Achal. Uh, there's a question around if we support the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Oh, yes, we recently released that. So you might have come across that post uh, on our social media. So we have released other uh, support for DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. So that drone is supported. Uh, we have a couple of questions around remote di uh, diagnostics. So uh, will it be all visible uh, in the system, multiple do uh, docking stations that are going to be deployed and can user differentiate between the first generation and the new uh, stations that are going to be deployed? Right, so we are building a complete uh, dashboard which, uh, are which, which you would be able to see all the data and logs and it already provides all the logs as well as the details of the station plus the drone health. So the protocols, the technology has been built on that uh, with the remote connectivity keeping in mind. So we know that these would be deployed at a unit where you don't want to go uh, frequently to check the system. So all these diagnostic reports and logs would be available through the dashboard. Uh, as well as there would be over there updates to the system where, where iDeployer would be providing that in case of any firmware changes uh, or any software changes which are required on the box. And the rest of the system is all cloud-based, so you would get uh, regular updates uh, as we release more and more features. Thanks, Achal. Uh, I think uh, we have a few questions around the autonomous workflow. So. Uh, the particular question says that when the drone goes to home automatically, does it also carry out precision landing on its own and then enter the box? Yes, of course. So every time it goes to the box, uh, it triggers the precision landing uh, and precisely lands. So this is a fully automated workflow uh, where nobody is controlling a box, nobody is controlling the drone. It automatically triggers that uh, workflow where the box would be open Till, uh, while, meanwhile, the drone reaches the home location and then it would uh, detect the tag and land precisely. A question along with that is, does the drawer stay open when the drone is deployed? So once the drone takes off, the drawer closes. So that's another workflow. So even uh, the APIs that we have designed, if you're looking to integrate that with any custom workflow, you can easily do so, where if you no longer have to interface with uh, drone separately, box separately, and build these automated workflows, because you all you want to give is takeoff or execute or launch, and everything would then happen automatically. So the box would open, uh, the drone would wait for the GPS lock, it will fly, it will do the mission. Meanwhile, the box uh, would close, so nothing can fall inside, etc. And as the mission is done, or if you trigger a RTH, the box would again open and land it. Now, if uh, the conditions change and uh, if there is no significant light, it would turn on the lights on the pad where we can also do precision landing during the night time. All right. Uh, with Again, regards to precision landing, what is the approximate wind speed at which precision landing is possible? Right, so we have designed uh, the protocols where it can sustain uh, different wind conditions. I think Peter would be the right person to uh, tell that they, they have been testing that in the uh, UK winds. Yeah, so we, um, we performed multiple, multiple land precision landings. Um, so we we um, we did a test recently um, in um, seven meters per second, gusting at twelve meters per second, um, um, and the precision landing performs very very well. So it, you know it, it, it's not a case of it gets to a certain height and says right I'm going to land. Um, it's really waiting for that ideal time and gets to the right height before saying right now I'm ready to land. Um, so it, it's um, it performs very very well. We haven't missed the landing pad. Um, and with our rollers as well on the sides, we've never been not able to close the drawer um, and actually position the, the drone onto its charging. Um, so it's very, very precise. Thanks, Peter. Uh, a question is whether rain would affect the, the box or is, is that going to be a problem? 
no, the, the, the rain doesn't affect the, um, the, the, the box itself. Um, however, you wouldn't want to be flying the Mavic in the rain. Um, so we can integrate weather stations on the system. Um, so that, that can be done as a separate add-on for you. Um, and that weather system will talk to um, the software and you won't be able to complete a mission if it's not the, the, the correct parameters in terms of the weather conditions. Um, so you, you'll be able to see that information on the dashboard. Thanks, Peter. Uh, with regards to the following up on the same question, a question for you, Achal, if rain is going to be a problem, how would you stop it on a pre-programmed flight? Uh -huh. Right. So as uh, Peter said, uh, we are integrating weather stations with the docking station where, again, an automated workflow would check the weather uh, before deploying the drone. So through the mission scheduler, uh, you can plan the mission, but if the weather is not good, it would automatically take call uh, to skip that mission and give you notification. Uh, we are also working in progress to integrate uh, online systems where even when you're scheduling those missions, you have visibility of how the weather is going to go like. So at least you have some forecast beforehand while you schedule these missions. And if this happens during the mission where you that starts raining, it's an overcast situation, uh, the system can detect it because the drone is constantly connected uh, to the docking station and the cloud where we can trigger return to home and the drone will come in the minimal possible time to reduce the damage and get back to a safe house. Speaking of fail safe, Sachal, we have a question which uh, says that if there are two I deployers deployed, say A and B, and if A breaks down, can you land with B? So maybe we can discuss about the PL fail safes here. Yeah. Right. So every uh, uh, tag, you, you might have seen uh, uh, the optical tags, ARU markers on the docking station has their unique identity. So uh, if you have a fleet of them, where you look, you're deploying multiple drones at the station, you can easily do that, where you can trigger, uh, set a fail-safe location. Now this fail-safe location could be a, a box or it could be a, a simple landing place. So if it's a box, it would detect the tag and do this. Of course, this needs to be configured before. So the system understand what needs to be done in case of uh, that kind of feel safe. Thanks. We, we have a lot of questions. However, we are closing on time. Uh, the final question, uh, I think, Peter, that's going to be quite important. If, if anybody purchases a Mavic uh, locally, can the integration be done remotely by the, themselves? Yes, it can. We've got a training video of how to do the modifications. Um, so in terms of the drone, um, it will just be attaching the, the feet, um, which is a simple process. Um, the feet come pre-wired um, for you to, to plug into the, bat, uh, the drone's um, battery connection. Um, so that's quite a simple process. The RC is a bit more complex. Um, so we've done a video of how you do that process. Um, because it's just a case of um, you would have to change the two antennas um, to, to extended antennas out of the box. Um, and it's um, removing this, uh, the, the RC switch um, and changing that to um, a wired switch to um, our um, control board on the system. Um, and the battery um, is just removing a square box, about one centimeter by one centimeter above uh, next to the switch. Um, which, which exposes the um, single ball computer there uh, for you to just um, add a wire to. Um, so you would need to have sort of some technical experience in how to do that. Um, we provide a, a how-to video, um, but it's uh, your responsibility in terms of doing their modifications. Um, you know, our preference is that we supply the drone for you. Um, because we are a distributor uh, of the drones, um, so we can get them um, at the similar price you would pay from the distributor. So uh, that isn't the problem. Thanks for clearing that out, Peter. So uh, everybody in the audience who's also asking whether this uh, session is recorded and, and if the recording will be made available. Yes, this, this uh, whole webinar is getting recorded and we will publish uh, the link uh, to view the recording uh, soon uh, in, in, in within 48 hours. 
I think we are almost up on time, Achal. Uh, if you have any closing thoughts and if you would like to uh, summarize the complete. Richard, I would like to first uh, thank Peter to uh, collaborate with us on this and helping the drone solution providers. So we've been really working with drone solution providers and businesses who are building their own uh, uh, technology in terms of solving a use case, could be a security, could be construction, uh, remote monitoring, wildlife uh, uh, protection, et cetera. So here we are helping these uh, drone solution providers get to the next level where they can have these automated system deployed. So yeah, with this partner program, our goal is to bring uh, the drone in the box technology to the masses by helping all the DSPs uh, kickstart their business in the drone automation. And this year we'll be closely working with selected drone solution providers and we'll be helping them through their journey. Uh, so uh, you, you can head to the link, register, and I'll just quickly move to that slide back where you can uh, go to uh, flightnow.com slash iDeployer or iDroneImages slash iDeployer partner program. Uh, again, you can just head to the website and you can go under the partner section and you'll find the form to fill in. And yeah, just go there, register, and our team will get back to you with the next steps. Yeah. And just from, um, from my point of view as well, I think, yeah, as I said in the previous webinar, some of you were there, but those of you who weren't, um, these, these events that we do is not about selling volume for us. Um, we, are, we are about finding the partners to help shape the future of autonomy. Um, and we want drone service providers to demonstrate these systems and um, help you um, have the use cases for these systems so we can simplify the, the regulations going forward. Um, and, you know, we are, th this is a journey that you're on with iDeployer and, you know, the, this webinar is about in the introduction, um, but feel free to contact me. Um, you know, our contact details are on the website and we'll send them after this um, webinar. Um, and we'll hook up on a call and we'll, we'll talk through um, any questions you have. Um, it doesn't end there, just get in touch, no problem. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you, Achal. Uh, so every, all of you in the audience have a great day out there. Great. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Bye. Thank you.